this session or these this creativity conference when I first started talking to Maxim about presenting and I think the screen is locked on you CC room four by the way. Ah, uh, apologies. Here we go. Let's fix that. Not that you're not beautiful. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, so the uh, you know when I first had the uh, initial conversation about participating in the creativity conference with Maxim, um, we were brainstorming about things that I could talk about or things that I thought might bring some value to to whoever attended the session. And ultimately, normally I present, I present a lot during the years at, at different conferences. At NAB, I gave 12 talks at NAB because a bunch of people dropped out because of COVID. So, you know, me being the fixer swung in there and, and knocked them out. But, it, and this was 12 presentations that I built, you know, to deliver which was a good kind of crash course and, you know, trying to be excellent while also trying to pump out volume, which is those two things don't normally go together. But the, uh, the point of that is I'm no stranger to building presentations and to delivering sort of keynote style decks and doing all that, that sort of pomp and circumstance. This one, we decided I wanted to do it raw and be, since we only have like 25 minutes left, 20 minutes left, I thought I would give you guys sort of a uh, a look at my journey in photography, and hopefully you'll you'll take something out of this. But my journey in photography, sort of briefly in the beginning, and then you know I'll take you through sort of my up and down relationship or love hate relationship with photography, ultimately ending with you know what's going on today right which is some pretty big exclusive news that you guys will hear first um if you're interested in this sort of thing so this is personal no slides just me sort of talking to the camera confessional uh reality tv style right it's going to tell you guys kind of what what this path has looked like so i want to set the stage so first of all i personally love photography or the greater world of creative, you know, now sometimes affectionately known as content creation or content. Uh, but I love that world. I love the world of the space of world building. I'm a big fan of movies like Marvel that have created all these different universes that then they can just build things and play in. I'm a fan of the tools that it takes to build these worlds like Unreal Engine, of course, Photoshop and Creative Suite, Creative Cloud and you know, all the other amazing tools like Affinity Photo is out there for photographers now. There's really cool tools out there for creating and editing video like Descript.com, which I'm going to be sort of transitioning a lot of my projects over to. So I'm, I'm just a big nerd when it comes to creating these fantastical worlds and what that looks like and the tools that go along with them and then the creative people that put that put all that stuff together. So I say all that to sort of set the stage for who I am and why I'm on this path of, or, you know, I was on this sort of sine wave path of love hate with, uh, with the with photography. And that's, you know, that's sort of tongue in cheek when I say that I love photography. Um, but there are times when I get tired of the industry and the things that are going on you know, and the sort of tidal wave or tide of stuff that's coming out. So I'll talk about that. So just to just to go through historically, you know, kind of where I've been and where things are now. Um, and if you don't know who I am, I'm, I'm a, I'm a photographer at the core, like I said, but I'm also a podcaster, uh, and a marketer and, you know, a bunch of other things if you niche down into it. But at the core, I'm a photographer and I run a podcast called This Week in Photo, which many people will, will or the people that online know me, know me for that podcast called This Week in Photo. So, and that is the crux of why there's a love-hate relationship with photography. So, Love Photography started in the United States Air Force as a combat photojournalist way back in the day. You know, I went into the Air Force in 1989. You know, there's an eight in there. So 1989, I went into the Air Force, was stationed in Japan. And that's where I fell in love with photography for the most part. I didn't even know that I wanted to be a photographer. And I went in as enlisted. And at the end of basic, you know, they sort of tell you, hey, you know, you're going to be this, or you're going to be that, and you're going over there, you know, and 
I tested really high in creative. So they said, you're going to be a photographer and you're going to Tokyo for two years. Great. So went to Tokyo for two years and learned photography. I did, there's in the Air Force there, back in the day, there were two ways that you could sort of get certified as a photographer or ready to do your job. And that was OJT on the job training, or um, you would go through, uh, you know, basically tech school, they call tech school, which is, you know, you go away and they teach you how to be a photographer, and then you come back and there's a probationary period and then boom, you're a photographer. I went through OJT, which consisted of a stack about this high, I'm not even exaggerating, loose leaf binder of you know, I think there were five bind or five sets in the, the set or five books in the set. And they progressed from what is light all the way through to, you know, advanced photographic techniques, at least advanced for the day back then. So, and I, I consumed it. I went through, I think you had like six weeks to go through the whole thing. I did it in like two weeks. I just, I loved it. And the thing that fascinated me about photography was the speed of light that's the the basic reason why I do everything I do today is I'm still fascinated by the speed of light and the fact that we don't understand it yet <laughs> you know we understand it mostly but we don't understand all of it you know it's like gravity we understand it we can send people and probes to Venus accurately to within an inch but we don't understand exactly and why gravity does what it does, why it works. Kind of like dark matter, we don't understand that. Anyway, I digress. So love affair with light, love light, love composition. And then Air Force said, boom, you're a photographer, you're gonna go into this thing. And then I fell in love with the things that you could do with light by bending it. You know, like I called it time travel. Cause when I first started learning about light, I'm like, hey, this is time travel. You're telling me those stars up there that I'm looking at are billions of years old and light's just making here, that's time travel. We're looking back into the past and at a smaller scale, when you're photographing, you're photographing things that, you know, when you look at it, it already happened. Even the sun, this light takes eight minutes for it to get from there to here and bounce off of something and get into your brain, right? That's time. So we're, I was like, when I was a kid, I was like, so that means I am never ever actually looking at something that's, current i'm always looking into the past no matter what even if it's across the street or on my desk whatever i'm looking at already happened because it took that light that time anyway that's why i fell in love with this stuff the love hate piece comes in so fast forward air force um got out of the air force after eight years um uh, and then went into uh marketing and creative in silicon valley during the dot-com explosion. And I worked at companies like, if you're in the Bay Area, you'll recognize the San Jose Mercury News. I was their first um, web or chief multimedia producer was my title there. Uh, and I left there, went to Yahoo and managed photography things there. Then I went to Apple and helped with the iPhoto team in marketing. And then over to, to Adobe, where I joined the Lightroom and Photoshop team and help with that, you know, which was a dream, right? It's like, I'm actually getting to help create the tools that let people create all this amazing stuff. So, and then Adobe laid me off as they did 800 other people in one day. We all got the boot as dot-com companies shrunk down. And uh, I remember thinking, okay, I want to do something, but I, I want to try my hand at the solopreneur, entrepreneur stuff. So, Fast forward, there's a lot of steps in here that I'm skipping over because we only have a couple minutes, right? So skipping over a lot of stuff, started This Week in Photo, This the podcast that I do to this day, this is about a decade ago, decade plus, maybe 11 years, started This Week in Photo as a podcast. Actually, I started it, I joined it. It had already been started uh, by some friends of mine that then abandoned it, and then I took it over after the layoff happened and sort of dusted it off and and I was thinking, hey, what if I took what I know about marketing and all that stuff and applied it to this thing? I wonder if I could grow it and make it something significant. Turns out I could. And I grew it to where it is today, which is a pretty sizable, well-known brand in the photography industry. The love-hate piece of this conversation comes in when you from the job, right? The job that I built. If any of you have ever read a book called... Um, uh, rich Dad, Poor Dad. I forget who the author is. Somebody in the audience will know. 
the rich dad, poor dad. And one of the takeaways from that book that sticks with me to this day is beware of following your dream, because if you catch it, you may start to resent it. Right. <laughs> so, and that's, that's kind of what happened. You know, like I'm going to, you know, like the many corporate America people that are sitting in their cubes or working remotely or whatever today are saying, you know what, it would be great one day, you know, my hobby is fishing. One day I'm going to be a professional fisherman or my hobby is whatever, photography. I'm going to shoot weddings on the weekend and I can make double my salary here. Why am I putting up with this stuff? I'm going to go do that. The If you peel the onion back, when you do that, there's a lot of stuff that goes into running your own business from the accounting side to the marketing side to, you know, taxes to benefits to all this stuff. And you're a single point of failure right? <laughs> because if you go away, the train grinds to a halt, right? So that's, I've been on that train for, for a decade, which is fine, you know, and I grew it and everything's fine. You know, this house is funded by This Week in Photo and all that stuff. But the hate piece comes into it where, you know, I, when you're, when you love something and you become really knowledgeable about it and you're plugged into the industry and knowledge, not because you've been reading books and watching YouTube videos or, or LinkedIn learning or whatever, but because you love the thing and you want to know more about it, right? It's like you're in a relationship with somebody new. You want to know everything about that person. Same thing with this, right? You, when you love a thing, you want to learn everything about it. I'm, and I still do. I marinate in photography. People ask me like, what do you do in your spare time? Photography, read about, I don't know. I just like photography. I'm always thinking about what's coming next and metaverse and all that. But the, the hate piece comes in where there's too much of it. And because of the, the machine that I built and the torque that it takes to get that machine or keep that machine going and the fuel and all that, that what hap what ends up happening is the all of my energy goes there and none of it goes to photography or very little of it goes to photography like over to my side over here if you look at my office because this week in photo is popular you know sponsorships happen people send gear over you know to you know to loaner gear and you got to send it back or whatever but you get to play with a bunch of stuff which is a dream for a lot of photographers but it's the nightmare and it is the i don't know kind of personal i don't want to say personal hell because that's dramatic but if you have all these cameras staring at you but you can never pick one up because you're too busy doing a thing that made those cameras get here then you start resenting photography and that's where i was for a while i started resenting you know this whole like oh man you know, okay, are we really, do we really need another camera? Do we, you know, really Nikon, really Sony, really Canon? Do we really, the cameras that we have are a million times better than the cameras just three years ago, but there's another one on the horizon that does even more. And I was thinking down the, that path because I don't get to shoot because I'm so busy all the time. So I'm resenting it. I'm like, okay, yeah, now I'm going to get another camera that I can't play with. Great. You know, so then you start resenting photography and you know just sort of going down that path and then all the questions or the you know as a podcaster kind of going through the the or the path of the interviewing podcaster is to talk about the subject all the time right so and you know this week in photo also has a vibrant community with a bunch of photographers in there where we're always talking about photography but the the negative side effect for the host and the builder of all that is you 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 start seeing patterns in the chaos, you know, and start seeing that a lot of photographers, you know, I think maybe the newer photographers, but there's a lot of verses in there and or ors in there and not a lot of ands. And what I mean by that is raw, if you're a photographer, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Raw versus JPEG or Nikon versus Canon or this versus that, you know, there's always a versus and there's always those arguments happening. You start seeing those repeating. And as you get older, a decade of podcasting, you're like, okay, this conversation again, <laughs> you know, so you got to freshen it up. You got to keep it fresh. So fast forward to where we are today. So that's the rocky roll road that I was on, but how did I reignite that spark in photography? So this is my personal journey. Take from it what you will. Um, 
about a year ago, well, actually three years ago, my we lost my uh, big sister. So my big sister passed away from cancer. She was in Chicago. It was a horrific, as you can imagine, experience from the first phone call. I have something to tell you all the way through to me reading, you know, at the funeral. And then the next year, uh, 2020, we uh, lost my dad. My dad was the second one to pass and he, you know, stroke and complications associated with stroke passed away, same deal. And then just this past year in 2021, my daughter-in-law passed away from cancer. So this was a, a, a constant kind of waves coming in cadence of this is just a crappy year, you know, and you're saying that year over year. And that's notwithstanding all the other nonsense that's been happening on the planet, right? This is your personal, you know, overhead to deal with. And then you layer on top of that, oh, and now I got to worry about this, 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 and this on top of all that other stuff. So there was a lot of pressure. And as they say, pressure makes diamonds, right? So one of the, one of the diamonds that popped out of all that pressure was my realization that the only thing that was kind of getting me through all that and keeping me sane aside from my family here was photography and my love of photography and my escape into photography and understanding and learning and all that stuff. So then to reignite the spark based on all that. So that was the kindling, you know, those three years was like, okay, what do you do now? The spark was me sitting down literally in this office on that whiteboard back there and saying, okay, the number one consistent thing that all three of those people that I lost over the past, those past three years, they're, you know, sitting at the bedside and having those conversations, the one thing that every, all three of them said was they regretted not doing the things that they thought they were going to have time to do. Literally, all three of them said the same thing in different ways. And I, my takeaway from that was, okay, what am I doing? Am I happy doing what I'm doing now? Do I love photography? Sure, but the constellation that I have built around photography, do I love that? Do I love, you know, what do I love? Kind of like the Marie Kondo, pointing the Marie Kondo, you know, method at your life, right? What is sparking joy in my life and what's not? You know, I'm getting older. Do you want to spend the second half of your life unhappy and then end up in a bed like your dad complaining that you didn't go to Africa like you wanted to do or you didn't get an RV and drive around the country? You know, he had those dreams and never did them because it, he always thought he had tomorrow. So my rekindling, my personal rekindling came from sitting in this room on that whiteboard, kind of listing out the what I like, what I don't like about the core sample that is my life right now. And what I did, and I won't, I won't bore you with all the details of that. I just want to leave some time for Q&A at the end. What I did, what I ended up with, and here's the big reveal. What I ended up with was I, in This Week in Photo, the podcast that I built and that has been going on for, like I said, the last decade, I, I don't want to do it anymore. In its current incarnate, incarnation, I don't want to do the podcast as it stands today. It's, it's on rails and it's kind of stuck in that eddy. It's great. And I built some, some great processes in there to make it amazing. And there's a, literally oh, almost 2,000 episodes that I've recorded, hour-long episodes, do the math, right, um, in there. So there's a mountain of content, a legacy of content in there. But do I want to keep doing that for the next 10 years? And the answer was a resounding no. So if that's the resounding no, what does it look like? So I made the decision of, I love podcasting. I love photography and I love the show and I love the community that I've built and all that. The show itself, I made the decision to let's, let's control alt delete this week in photo. Let's rebuild it. Let's look at it and just do the blank white whiteboard with it and create a brand new show or a brand new entity that's designed for today. Not a, not, you know, it's not inside the actor's studio that's been, you know, that was going on forever, right? Let's, let's look at what we have and the assets that I have and things that I like doing and the things that the audience resonates with. Let's take that and mix it up. Let's break the Lego set down and rebuild it into something that's more appropriate for today and also more appropriate to keep my juices flowing in terms of being enthusiastic about what I'm building. 
So that's where we are today. And literally, and part of that, the, the second part of that shoe is, so how do you do that? Sure, you can do it again uh, and rebuild something, but do you really want to be on that sine wave of, especially during COVID, like the income sine wave was crazy um, in terms of sponsorships and all that on the podcast. But do you really want to be in that world? One of the red things is I wrote the list in the, the hates in red and the likes in blue on my, my whiteboard back there. One of the hates was dealing with all that infrastructure stuff. You know, like I don't, you know, the, the entirety of this week in photo from the, from the podcast and the music in the pod, you know, the editing of it, the logo design, the website, everything is built and produced by me. It's that's it which is not fun. Again, that takes me away from what I want to be doing, which is shooting more. So I made the decision to, yeah, let's control all delete on TWIP and make it something better. Let's make it something amazing, but I don't want to do it alone. I want to, I want horsepower behind it. And further, I'm tired of working alone. So I made the decision uh, to merge this week in photo with a larger company, you know, i.e. acquisition, merger, aqua hire, whatever term you want to apply to it, which hasn't been announced yet publicly. You're hearing it here first. And I won't tell you the company yet because that hasn't been announced yet, but it's a larger entity that is that is bringing This Week in Photo into it as their podcasting and creative and new media content marketing arm. So I'll be running all that. What that does is take all that overhead off my head, like email writing and maintaining the website and you know all that stuff that keeps me away from doing what I love doing, which is two things, hosting the podcast, talking to other photographers and shooting, content creation, doing all that stuff. Um, so that's what's happening. You know, that's, so that's my journey up to literally right now. I literally docu-signed the agreement last week on Thursday of last week. So it is official. And um, it's a new road ahead. And this is already reigniting my creative spark in terms of things that I want to do, things that I can do, and different projects that I want to deploy now that there's resources and all these other things that are available to do it. Um, and I get to kind of sit back and say, you built, I was able to build something basically from almost nothing, you know, and build it up and its reputation and the asset and the brand equity up to a level where a significant player in the photography industry thought it was a no brainer to bring it in as part of their company and all that that brings. So I take a lot of pride in the fact that that happened. And I have a lot of enthusiasm now for, you know, continued enthusiasm for the world of photography, photographers, and all that stuff. So there you have it. That's the journey from me being stationed in Japan at Yokota Air Base all the way to, you know, here we are this week in week one of this new era. So I want to leave the last couple of minutes open. If anybody has any questions or anything, feel free to, uh, I don't know how we want to field those or we can just end it now if there are no questions. Um, I mean, we're the last session of the day, so there is no rush to end this. Um, but yeah, no, really inspiring story. Thank you, Frederick. Um, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, people are just yeah, saying the chat. Thank you, everybody in the chat. I wasn't I wasn't reading that, obviously, because I was yapping. But thank you. I appreciate it. Not so much a question, but David was talking about how he used to be the family photographer and looked around uh, 40 pounds of gear. 35 millimeter <laughs> slide on one shoulder, Super 8 sound on the other. And now it's all on <laughs> a cell phone. Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely true. Yeah, the um, and that's one of that's a really good point. Because one of the things that I'm really interested in exploring seriously is making the shift of the narrative from the, I mean, we went from the iPhone or not the iPhone, but the mobile phone being a joke when it comes to photography. And, you know, then we went to it almost being viable, which resulted in probably entire childhoods being you know, captured on a crappy camera, right? And then now, now we're, we went and then we transitioned to an area era where it's like, oh, that's, that's pretty good. I could do a lot with that thing. And then current day is these cameras and these phones are just, 
ridiculous. I mean, you could produce an entire television show on just this. I don't even think it's right to call it a phone anymore, right? So yeah, to that end, I want to start leaning into projects that are fo focusing specifically on leaning into a mobile first content creation workflow. And what is that? What does that look like, right? From a video standpoint, you can capture in 4K on the phone, you can edit on the phone in an app called LumaFusion, and you can, you know, upload to YouTube or wherever you want to go directly from the phone. You can do it all from the phone. So I'm, I'm excited. Part of me is excited in exploring that path and finding out where the holes are currently. Because, you know, sure, you can get, you can do all this stuff, but if it takes you twice as long to edit something on a mobile device as it does in Final Cut on the Mac, then, you know, then the mobile device is still an experiment, right? So I want to get to the point where it's not an experiment of, or I want to see if we're at the point where it's not where this is an experiment to see if this thing is possible or how painful is it to, or are we at a place where I find joy in editing on my big iPad with a pencil sitting on the couch, a joy that I wouldn't have sitting here at this desk editing with the mouse and the keyboard, you know, are we getting there? And I think in a lot of ways we are, because I think, you know, from the standpoint of and my friend, Jeff Greenberg, who's speaking at this conference also, we've had this, con this conversation about tools like this and whether mobile is ready for production or professional level work yet. And he his answer is and he's a professional editor he's a cutter he cutter he treat he teaches final cut and premiere and all the things so he knows what he's talking about right so his i think i'm paraphrasing but his response to that was sure but it's always a time versus money thing because if you're getting paid by the hour and it takes like i said twice as long to edit on the ipad even if it's more fun you know, if you're professional, are you going to do that? And then my response to that is, that's a good point. But maybe you're saddled with the curse of knowledge, Jeff, because you have been, you know, you grew up with these tools, you've seen, you know, Final Cut go from point A to point where X, where it is now, right? You've seen that flow. And you know all the tools and what they can do. You know the hot key, hot key sequences. But what if it's a new kid coming in? Literally, a kid coming in. They've lived with a phone all their life, Instagramming and all that. Now they have an iPad and professional level tools on there, and they can create, you know, Marvel level work on an iPad. It may be harder, but will they know it's harder? Right? Will they know that it's harder on the iPad if they never had the benefit of Avid or Final Cut or Premiere? Right? And, you know, it's going to be like ankle weight or like ankle weights if someone from that world, from the Final Cut world, came to an iPad, you know, a professional editor that's been editing Lord of the Rings and now they got to do it on an iPad, they're going to scream all day long. But if you grew up that way and never played in the, you know, the waters of, Da Vinci Resolve or Final Cut or Premiere, then, you know, I don't know. I'm asking the question. I, I want to ask the question. If you came at it from that direction, would you be unhappy? And could you produce, you know, professional level work if all you knew was a mobile workflow? So, I don't know, long way of saying it, but it's a, uh, you know, it's interesting. Things like that interest me, mobile and where it's going. Things like, uh, the metaverse, what does that look like? What is it ultimately going to look like? Things like NFT, you know, the whole crypto and NFT world, understanding it for one, because you got you to understand it more beyond just a headline level, like what is it and what are, what are the potentials of the blockchain and what could that bring to us? So that excites me, understanding that. How do those worlds merge together? How do you take an NFT and put it in the metaverse and sell things in the metaverse, like virtual goods within Call of Duty games or whatever? How does that all work together? That all interests me. And then it's all underneath an umbrella of content creation and photography. So all these cool tools that we have now that, that keep coming out and we're going to have these multiple worlds all over the place. What does that do for photographers? Can photographers now create work that's going to be exclusive to that world and or those worlds? And what does that work look like? Is that work 
uh, cinemagraphs? Is it video clips? Is it still photos? Is If it's tied to NFTs, that work could even change over time, right? So you could have a photo that changes based on things that are happening in the real world. Like, I don't know, Apple stock, you know, passes 10,000 or whatever. If that happens, then this art changes to this. You know, you can do those sorts of things within that within that world. So I'm really interested in how these technologies will sort of gel out and and inspire or be the harbingers of other technologies that we don't even know of yet. Kind of like we didn't even know that Uber or Lyft or Uber Eats or DoorDash or any of these things were going to be almost a way of life for some people just 10 years ago. Or if you think of it pre-iPhone, which is relatively recent, if you think about it, pre-iPhone, none of these things were even a dream, right? Having Uber or Lyft or any of these things, were they were not possible. Or even drones. Drones were you know, partially mobile phones were partially responsible for the the explosion of the mobile or consumer drone market, where accelerometers and digital compasses and the miniaturization of the components inside of these devices made that thing possible, which now makes more creative things. Now you don't have to hire a helicopter. You can get top down shots of anything, you know, for relatively little money. So all this stuff excites me because it's all coming and it's all an evolution. The The worst thing for me, I think, would be to have my creativity atrophy, right? Because right now I'm, I'm, as you can tell, over the moon excited about where we are and I'm optimistic, you know, despite everything happening in the world, I'm optimistic about where things could go and where things might go for just people, you know, creatives in general. Um, it, it's right now it's more of a pick your battle, right? What do you, what do you want to focus on while leaving time to do the thing that makes you happy, which is be with your family and make photos. So I don't know. It's fun stuff. Any other yeah, questions? Absolutely. It's changing so fast. I think they made uh, multiple feature films on phones now, which is. Which yeah. Is Commercials, everything. Yeah. Um, Gavin had a question. Um, could you say more about what's exciting you most about these changes for you over the next year or so regarding your relationship with photography? Yeah. Thanks, Gavin. Um, yeah, absolutely. A great question. I'd say there's a lot and I'd say the biggest thing that's exciting me about these changes is to and this this may sound weird, you know, especially if you 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 know you have a day job and you haven't been sort of the solopreneur, the the isolation. Even though we have Zoom and you know I'm going out all the time with friends and all that, but the professional isolation is a thing, right? Um, on the and I'll answer that in two ways. So on the professional podcasting, now corporate side, right? So on that side of things what excites me about the coming year is this new path and what myself and this new company will build together, you know, with more resources than just one guy and who has 24 hours in a day to do everything. So that's the first thing that excites me is what those possibilities might look like and the things that we might build and what TWIP will look like come this time next year, right? And the audience size, all that, it's really exciting. Sky's the limit on that. On the profess on the photography side, I'm really looking forward to just going out and shooting again, right? And starting to take trips that are dedicated to photography and be leading some workshops on photography, just all of that stuff and kind of getting back into it. People that, you know, kind of a running joke inside of, ironically, inside of my This Week in Photo community one of the running jokes in there is like Frederick very rarely posts a picture in there, right? Because Frederick rarely, very rarely is going out and shooting anything and, or shooting anything that I feel is worthy of putting inside of the community with, you know, with my, my fellow photographers in there. But I'm looking forward to getting back to that. The other thing is I'm looking forward to getting back into social. I very much regressed out of the social media space, you know, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, yada, yada, Twitter, all these things don't really post 
much at all on any of those networks for a variety of reasons beyond the scope of this call. But, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back into that world and sort of opening. This is, I, I would look at this call as the, the, probably the first step in that, right? So this is the first step of me sort of opening the kimono and having an open and frank conversation with people, you know, socially, right? Versus it's this week in photo, it's all about photography or nothing, kind of showing how the sausage is made and what decisions went into making the sausage, I think is part of what I want to change in this next coming year, along with, you know, knocking it out of the park with this rebrand and all that stuff of this week in photo, and hopefully making some cool work on the photography side of things, some of which may even make it into being NFTs, and we'll see how that goes. So yeah, it's a it's a exciting time. Gavin, so thanks, thanks. Gavin. All sounds exciting. And uh, all the very best with the future. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so watch this space. So yeah, if you're not if you're not subscribed to This Week in Photo, it's available on all the major podcast platforms. So just search for This Week in Photo, you'll find it or go to the website, which is also thisweekinphoto.com, and you'll see ways to subscribe to the podcast there. Um, and I, I encourage you to subscribe if you're interested at all in the story and how it unfolds, because that's where I will be sort of chronicling this adventure as it unfolds over the, the next months and years and all that. So it should be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that was, a, that, that was great. I, uh, I, I very much enjoyed that. I'm sure everyone else did. Thank you. Um, Thank you. If there's no more questions. Um, David no? says he wants a big hint as to who bought the podcast. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you there, the name of the company is a, uh, what's the best way to say this? The name of the company is comprised of letters from the alphabet. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> And no, it's not alphabet. It's not him. alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I wish it was alphabet. No, I don't. Actually, I don't wish it was alphabet. It, I'm exceedingly pleased with the company <laughs> that I'm working with. Um, and I'm not just saying that. I was literally, they were at the top of my list when I started walking down that path. They were literally written at the top. This is the company. If I can yeah. work at any company in the photography industry and have Twit be a part of that company, which company would it be? And they were at the top of the list. So, and we worked it out. So that here is we really are. amazing. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.